Cardia is brought to you in part by H.D. Smith Foundation, a private grant-making foundation in Springfield, Illinois. Abraham Lincoln Capital Airport, daily flights to Chicago on United and to Dallas on American Airlines, online at flyspi.com. Eck, Schaefer, and Punk, LLP, and ESP Wealth Management, LLC, specializing in fulfilling all your accounting and wealth management needs. Securities offered through First Global Capital Corporation, member FINRA and SIPC. Investment advisory services offered through First Global Advisors Incorporated. Prairie Heart Institute, nationally recognized, locally committed. Online at prairieheart.com. And viewers like you, thank you. Welcome to Cardia, Hearts and Sciences. I'm pleased, as always, to bring you the program dedicated to the understanding of the human heart. I'm Mark McDonald. And our usual co-host, Dr. Greg Mishkel, who is not here this week, couldn't be here this week, but don't tell him I said this. This kind of works out pretty good, Dr. Cremoltum. He's a colleague of Dr. Mishkel's because you're an electrophysiologist. And Correct. you really know this stuff that we're going to be talking about. And uh, you also happen to go way back with our special guest. So, welcome. Thank, Thank you, you very much. And Dr. Dave Albert, you go all the way back with Cree to Oklahoma some, what, 30 years ago? We do. Actually, more than 30 years ago, but yes. Uh, Cree and I were old friends, and we met in, a, in an electrophysiology research lab at the University of Oklahoma back uh, before, uh, certainly before my kids. But uh, Your field has come a long way, and, and you're what a lot of people would call a pioneer. You've developed new devices clear through all, all that time. You've sold companies, you've developed products, you've sold other companies, developed new products. Now your product is with a company called AliveCore. Is that right? That's correct. A company I started in 2011. And what do you produce? Well, we produce a, uh, a, a smartphone EKG device. And as a matter of fact, it works with any smartphone. I happen to have one here on my iPhone. It's a very small kind of credit card sized device that turns a personal electrocardiogram. But not only does it do that, but it transmits that EKG almost immediately to a physician like Dr. Moulton so that you can get expert advice. It's the notion of connecting the patient directly to the caregiver. Okay, this device is called, is that called Cardia Pro? It is, this is called Cardia. So this is Cardia Mobile, mobile, as it's very mobile. Cardia Pro is the physician software that allows them to review this and any others in a very secure manner because medical information is is private, covered by what we call HIPAA, um, you know, federal privacy laws. And so we have to keep everything private between the patient and the physician. Would you hold that up for us just a little bit so we can see it while you're looking? Sure. Show us how it works. Well, uh, the way it works, it's pretty simple. Uh, I would just start my app up, hit record your EKG, and then if I hold it, it will begin to give me my EKG. Because your fingers are on the sensors that exactly. are on the back of the phone. Exactly. My fingers are on the back of the phone where the sensors are, and I get what's called lead one, which is if you ever get hooked up in a doctor's office or a hospital with all those electrodes, lead one is the first lead of a 12 lead ECG and it's the left arm minus the right arm and this goes back the hundred years of the beginning of electrocardiography and so we actually give the doctor something they're used to seeing a part of it and enable them to really assess what we call your cardiac rhythm what Dr. Moulton's an expert at modifying supporting improving the cardiac rhythm which affects millions of people uh, here in the United States. Cree, when I last time I got an EKG I had these sticky things all over me and he's just shown us that you can do it with just your two fingers. That's right. <laughs> so what's, why, why did they do all this for me? Well, the EKG you're referring to is called a 12-lead EKG, and it takes 
12 leads or 12 uh, connections that are much like a voltmeter, a positive or a red electrode and a black one. And if you place those two down on a surface where there's electrical activity traveling through, you can record the events as deflections uh, on a screen, uh, much like a voltmeter is. Uh, when there's nothing going on, there's no deflections. And when something is going on with the electrical activity, you'll see a blip that reflects some part of the cycle uh, as the heart beats. Um, lead one is one perspective. It's one viewpoint of the electrical activation of the heart by virtue of a positive, and electro a positive and a negative electrode oriented with respect to the heart in a certain way. If you rotate it at 90 degrees, you get a little different view of what's going on. And so the 12 leads are 12 views or perspectives of the same thing. And uh, each of those views has something unique uh, that makes us use So you get a lot more information <clears throat> from, the, from all those from right. all that input than you would from the fingers. But, doctor, I guess what you're doing here is you're measuring uh, uh, an arrhythmia, a specific arrhythmia. Well, we're actually, the 12 lead ECG has significantly more information. You can diagnose heart attacks, you can do other things. What I can tell you is, Dr. Moulton uh, uses something called an implantable defibrillator, which shocks people back to life when they have a cardiac arrest. It uses one lead to determine it needs to shock you. Around every building nowadays, you'll see these defibrillators mm -hmm. built into the wall. Those are called automatic external. They use one lead. So for, to assess most cardiac problems, arrhythmias, one lead is sufficient. But it's not sufficient to diagnose all the things you can do with the 12 lead ECG. But when you're at home, you not only have to be accurate, but you need to be convenient. For people to use this themselves, untrained people at home. We have to make it easy to use, have to make it simple, and you know, we're all beneficiaries of Steve Jobs in 2007, the late Steve Jobs saying, this is gonna change the world. And uh, you know, in 2011, when I started LiveCore, not everyone had a smartphone, but today they do. Will this work with any other smartphone it or does. just with the iPhone? No, it works with all the Android. So you know, people have Samsung, other types of Android phones. It works with Android phones. So basically, any smartphone can utilize our Cardio Mobile device. What gave you the idea to make something this portable, this light, and, it, and it's not expensive? How, how did you, what, what made you think that was even possible? Well, um, my children would tell you, A, I'm no longer a doctor, I'm a mad scientist. <laughs> and that also, I don't think outside the box. I live outside the box. And so I would tell you that back in the 1990s, this is an idea I had in 1996, you could not do it. And I got a patent, and I built a prototype, and it was this big kludgy thing, if you remember Palm Pilots and things, yeah. and it didn't work very well. But I had the idea that you could connect a patient directly to a doctor, and that these cell phones, and remember in 95, we didn't all have cell phones. You know, it was, they, you, you, we used to take a page, and then we'd call somebody back on our cell phone, because mm -hmm. we were worried about the minutes. Um, don't worry. Technology will solve, I've seen it now too many times. Those types of barriers will be overcome in time. Uh, and so today we carry a supercomputer in our pocket. It connects us, it communicates, it controls whether our communication, our banking, and it clearly will become uh, a personal portal to healthcare. It already is. You can connect into your, your personal health records, you can set appointments, you can do all those kinds of things. The people at Prairie Heart have a number of apps they, they recommend to or, or give to their patients. Mm -hmm. And so this is just another one that connects your heart directly to your doctor. Yeah, well that, that's where I was going next, Cree. Okay, Dr. Albert has made it possible for the patient to get information to you, but then how do you access it? Has enrolled in this Cardia Pro program that, that we have. Uh, they'll be given the uh, uh, Cardia uh, the electrodes to attach to their phone and when they choose to make a recording uh, on the app you can press a button that says send and that's going to send that ECG that was, was just recorded into our system so we have a uh, 
uh, a way that's referred to as a portal that gets all of these patients that are enrolled uh, their recordings uh, posted, so to speak, uh, in this website and uh, were notified by one of the personnel that's in the, in the lab uh, that uh, a recording has just been sent. They screen it and they can tell whether there's something going on that's important or uh, more routine looking, but we get the message and uh, through our cell phones we can uh, approach that or uh, a laptop computer. All you have to do is get on the internet. Um, the clinicians have a site that's, uh, you know, a private access to them, and there it is. <clears throat> so if you if you if you saw something that troubled you, your office would then in, get in touch with the patient, right? And you'd work together to work out how you would treat that, right? I see. That, that's just that's marvelous. Most of the time, the conditions are not life threatening. That's probably not what this is made for. Right. If you fainted, for example, because of a rhythm problem, you're not going to be uh, conscious to conduct what you need to be doing to show us what that rhythm was when you were passed out. You're unconscious. But it's more appropriate to uh, other uh, rhythms, which the majority of which are all benign. There, there's only one arrhythmia that's a lethal arrhythmia, and that's ventricular tachycardia or fibrillation. But the vast majority of the arrhythmias we have are well tolerated mm -hmm. and uh, enable you to remain conscious so simply to record. But you don't want to ignore them either. No. Oh, they don't feel good. Yeah. They don't feel good. That's right. Um, doctor, what, what will this detect? Well, it, it, you know, I can tell you that the two actually it detects what are probably the two most prevalent arrhythmias, what we call supraventricular tachycardia and atrial fibrillation. Atrial fibrillation is the most common arrhythmia. It, it increases in incidence exponentially after the age of about 60, so such that people over 80 have about a 10% chance of having atrial fibrillation. There are millions of people in the U.S. with atrial fibrillation. The second condition, supraventricular tachycardia, affects usually younger people. A lot of young women will have palpitations and are found to have uh, S what we call SVT. Dr. Moulton performs an ablation procedure that can treat both of those, both atrial fibrillation as well as SVT. And, 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 and SVT, most often you cure it. And with ablation, most often you may uh, manage it much better and make the patient feel much better, and that's, that's critical because, again, they're older patients and they don't just have one problem. A lot of SVT, young, young people who that's their only problem, when you cure it, it's gone, they're fine. Older people have lots of other problems. Mm -hmm. You know, unfortunately, our bodies kind of wear out as we get mm -hmm. older. But if they can help, you know, his ablation technologies can help manage that problem. And this is a good way of, of following up or diagnosing uh, atrial fibrillation. You have a Cardia product in a mm -hmm. watch as well. We do. We have a new, a new device which is a, an accessory you band, there you go. an accessory band to an Apple Watch. And this was just cleared by the FDA back in November. And it's called our Cardia Band, obviously. Uh, and it allows us to take an EKG, if I did do this, by just putting my <laughs> thumb on it. And you'll see there is my EKG being recorded on my watch. And the... Uh, really incremental benefit of this is that it's also monitoring my heart rate and my activity all the time. And so when it sees something out of the ordinary, I'm, I'm, I'm at a football game and um, my son scores a touchdown, my heart rate goes up 30 beats a minute, but I didn't, you know, I'm not jogging. It'll say, I noted something, why don't you take your EKG? And so it reminds you that's something we call smart rhythm that basically looks for abrupt, unpredicted changes and tells you to take it. Now that's, we, we haven't proven it. We've got some studies ongoing and I look forward to doing some with my friends here at Prairie Heart that this will become more of a continuous monitor of the type that Dr. Moulton said is what you really need for a lot of serious arrhythmias. Mm -hmm. but, but we've got to prove that. We've got to do the, the research. And so, you know, the good news is these people have a lot of patients. They've had excellent doctors. And they're going to help us mm -hmm. uh, prove whether or not this is uh, an incremental innovation over the current device. In, in your opinion, is this technology on the watch as reliable as the technology on the... Uh... It, it, it's, it's the same, actually. It is the same. It's okay. identical. So this technology 
is exactly identical. You get lead one ECG. We've proven it. We've actually published it's identical, which is why the FDA gave us clearance. Um, it just has the added benefit of it's A, it's always with you, and B, we have this continuous monitoring of your heart rate and activity. And so we can determine, even if you don't feel something, that something may have happened. Your heart rate went up or it went down when, it, it pro when, when the system thought it should stay the same. Mm -hmm. And so that's, uh, that's an innovation that we're now you know, just beginning to, uh, to figure out how valuable it is. And what is Cardia Pro? Cardia Pro is our physician portal. So it's whether you get information from the Cardia Band watch or from the Cardio Mobile, that information goes to Cardio Pro. It's a professional device. It's meant for medical professionals. So physicians, nurses, PAs, nurse practitioners who have access to that, again, patient protected data and can act on it, can interpret it, can say, oh, I think this is atrial flutter, another, mm -hmm. another diagnosis, and, and it becomes part of the patient's record. Uh, so it's a management tool that allows them to handle. I mean, at, at Prairie, they have hundreds of patients using these devices. So to manage that information, you need automation. You need a tool like CardioPro. Yeah. You're going to create. You're, you're going to be a laboratory for this whole thing. You have so many patients that are going to be enrolling and using this service. It's going to be kind of exciting. Yeah, we're uh, we have 185, 190 patients currently enrolled and. Uh, there's always information coming in every day. You know, people are so used to getting shell shocked when they hear what things, what medical items cost. These are not expensive. This is ninety nine dollars. You can get it from Amazon. I mean, we buy everything from Amazon. So you know, <laughs> if you got Amazon Prime, then you don't need it's free shipping. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's, you know, we made it that way because we all understand that out of pocket medical costs are significant for everyone, and so we wanted it to be very close to a copay. And so at $99, you know, it's a true FDA cleared medical device. You're hard pressed to find such technology at that kind of a price point. But that enables us to really serve, you know, hundreds of thousands of patients. Mm -hmm. By comparison, a Holter monitor is a conventional means of recording our rhythms that we've been using for 50, 60 years probably, um, runs around $350, $400. It's a 24-hour recording, and it's over with. That's all you get. Um, it, it does have that advantage of a continuous recording, so all 100,000 beats that you had in that 24-hour period are there, but um, the difference is striking that uh, you know, uh, 80 to $100 uh, and indefinite time frame uh, to be sending tracings mm -hmm. or recording them, printing them, and having them available. I mean, one of the interesting things is there are a lot of different types of EKG monitoring technologies, but the only two technologies that go beyond 30 days are one you implant, costing many thousands of dollars, and a little procedure. It may be minor, but it still is yeah. a, a cut and an insert, and our device at $99. So literally uh, a tiny fraction of that cost. And there are some arrhythmias that only happen very infrequently maybe once every few months. And so we represent uh, an inexpensive way of looking for those needles in the haystack. Doctor, you have, now correct me, I may be wrong on this, 57 patents? That's correct. Really? 57 <laughs> U.S. patents. <laughs> well, I, did they all come to fruition? I mean, did you actually make a product out of all you these? You know, the, I'm very proud of the fact that the vast majority of those are products. Wow. As a matter of fact, I'm, I'm a dinosaur. Uh, Dr. Moulton and I are dinosaurs. Uh, no, I, I'm sorry, Clee, I apologize. Uh, <laughs> but I, I am a dinosaur because <laughs> I usually try to make an invention before I patent it. And in today's world, many companies patent any idea they come up with, and mm -hmm. very seldom does it become something. Yeah. But I, I guess that just shows you I'm, I'm, I, I took Thomas Jefferson at his word. You know, he, he, he was our first patent examiner himself and had a number of patents on like his uh, dumbwaiter in Monticello. 
uh, I like to make my inventions before I patent yeah. them. There, there's an interesting story about how you get involved, got involved first starting to do this. Your father had a heart attack. That's correct. And um, you were, of course, uh, a physician and, and thought, you know, what can we do for people in that situation? And you, that was, your, was that your first invention? Well, it, it, it was um, <clears throat> actually, it was my first invention. Now that you, and it was my first patent, um, you know, back in 1980. Uh, it was at the University of Oklahoma. My dad was uh, had an, a heart attack. They came out and they said, we want you to exercise. And he lived way out in the country. Very smart man. Had been a Rhodes Scholar. Was, but they said, we want you to get your heart rate up to 120 beats a minute. And then you stop or slow down. And he said, how am I supposed to do that? There were no heart rate monitors in 1980. Mm -hmm. There were no chest straps. There were no watches. There were nothing like that. And so I went to a friend of mine at, at Duke who was a biomedical engineer, and I said, um, can we make something? And the guy said, yeah, yeah, I got a grad student friend of mine, and he'll make something. So I gave him $250. You know what $250 is? It's a lot of money. To a 25-year-old, yeah. it was a lot of money. And, and three months later, he brought me a box of wires. <laughs> he says, this is all $250 is worth in my time. And it really upset me. And because of that, I, I uh, took a leave of absence from medical school and went to biomedical engineering school at, there at Duke. And uh, my first patent was a wrist-based heart rate monitor that worked, was later licensed, and uh, I got a patent on it. And that began my incredible journey as a, a, a medical inventor. Yeah. Did your father eventually die from heart disease? Well, I, he had died at 91, though. See, so he died, you know, he didn't die until 21 years later. And... Uh, uh, so he, he lived a very long, fruitful life and, and, you know, died in his own bed. Where do I sign up, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. at age 91? That, People may have known about your, or heard about your father, too. He was the Speaker of the House of the, he was. the U.S. Uh, Congress, wasn't he? He was. He was the Speaker of the House uh, before Tip O'Neill, if people remember yep. Tip O'Neill. My Albert. dad was uh, named Carl Albert and was the Speaker of the House. And, and so a very high-stress job, very high-stress life. But, uh, you know, had a wonderful 27-year retirement, uh, living out in the country and uh, surviving heart disease. You know, he, he uh, we've learned so much. The people at Prairie Heart, they're, they're putting on a symposium now. Uh, tonight we have a girls' night out. People know better. So they know they need to stop smoking. They yep. know they need to eat better. They know they need to stay active. And they know that if they get into trouble, they have people like Dr. Moulton the people at Prairie Heart and tools like Cardio Mobile that can help us take better care of them and help us do it at a reasonable cost. And I think that's the key. Uh, higher quality, better outcomes, lower costs. Mm -hmm. How does it feel when you find out, learn that one of your devices saved a life? Well, it, it, it's, uh, as a physician, as a cardiologist and electrophysiologist, you know that you have a direct impact. Almost every day we have people calling us saying, you saved my life. You saved my son's life. You saved my father's life. Thank you. In That's one why occasion, it makes you, it makes it makes it worthwhile getting up every day. Yeah, I promise yeah. you. You saved a life in an airplane, thirty-five thousand, or not? Well, you put your device. Movie, but it was Dr. Eric Topol, probably the world's most famous cardiologist, was at thirty-five thousand feet, and they, he was coming back from the NIH, going to back to San Diego, and and all of a sudden, is there a doctor on board? And there were two surgeons with him. I said, Topol, this is your dig. So he gets up, a very famous doctor, uh, goes back, and the guy had had a stent put in seven years before. And he's sweating, he's diaphoretic, and he says, I've got chest. So he took his much earlier version of our device and put it on the guy's chest. And, and Eric told me the guy had five millimeters of ST elevation when I put it on his chest. The captain was standing over me, and I said, you've got to land this plane now. And the guy was, they landed the plane, they landed a plane at an airport where they couldn't take off from that plane. So, so the, they had to let, get everybody off, bring two planes in, uh, everybody to their final destination. It took another 12 hours. He said, I don't think anybody was happy with me. But he said the man had another stent, was having a heart attack, and, and you know, clearly saved his life as opposed to spending another three or four hours traversing to San Diego. Yeah. So you know, it, we didn't design it to do that. But uh, that, that's a wonderful yeah. story. How makes you, it worthwhile. How did YouTube figure into your well, early I, development? You, I, I built prototypes of this device. And as a matter of fact, that's how Dr. Topol found out. I built prototypes. 
And uh, I was going to go to the Consumer Electronics Show, which I, I wasn't a big frequenter. I go to a lot of cardiology shows. Uh, and I made a four-minute video, much like this, unscripted, mm -hmm. and just introducing this. And I sent it to three people. But I happened to click a little box that said, send to my LinkedIn. I had no Twitter followers. I wasn't really a social media person. I had 200,000 views of that YouTube video in 48 hours. I got called by every major media, I, ABC. I was on Good Morning America. I was on Fox and Friends. <laughs> I was on all these things. I was hunted down. <laughs> and that was the beginning of a live core. It was a spontaneous viral video. And in this era of a very bad flu season, we're all worried about uh, viral epidemics. Well, that's one viral epidemic that was worthwhile. That was good. What's on the horizon in your field? What, what's, what's, what's coming up? Well, I think we're going to have, uh, you know, smaller innovations, lower cost devices. The pressure's on. I mean, we've got we've to save money in the, in the United States. As your favorite son here, Everett Dirksen, said, a billion here, a billion there, that's real money. Pretty in healthcare, it's a trillion here, a trillion yeah. there, that's real money. So we've got to work efforts at taking better care of people, getting them to take better care of themselves, and using technology that we all have uh, as, a, as a medical tool. And I think we're going to do that. Leak some of the secret inventions you're working on. Oh, uh, no. That, you know, <laughs> it, it, there's, a, there's an old saying. It was a major technology company I used to work with. And I, I'd ask one of their engineers, what are you working on? They said, we at blank are always working on new and innovative technologies. Well, that's, we at Alive Corps are doing the same thing. But mm -hmm. I, I promise this won't be my last invention. Yeah. I, I assume you have an R&D department there. Do you directly oversee them? I, I, you know, we have R&D, but I've, I have a very small team, the same people that helped me develop this technology, which includes a couple of people in Australia. And uh, that team is, okay. uh, is, is very sophisticated, very experienced, and like me, very old. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, but we're not so old that we don't have new ideas. And we have people like Dr. Moulton. I, I spend a lot of time at the University of Oklahoma with the cardiac electrophysiologists who are world class. And that's an environment that allows me to see what problems need to be solved. You know, that's an insight that physicians have in the medical technology area. We get to see the problems. And then if you're crazy and you live outside the box, you might think of an idea to solve them. Dr. Albert, thanks. Thank Glad you, you to drop in. Dr. Moulton, thank, thank you. you. Yep. Good Free, job. thanks for coming in. I know you'll be leaving Illinois soon. You'll be staying. I'm staying. Okay. <laughs> thank you both for coming and in. And I'll be home. back. Okay, good. Good to hear it. Um, and for you, thank you for viewing as well. Remember, your heart. You have one. We all have one. The more you know about it, the better we can take care of it. See you next time. Cardia is brought to you in part by H.D. Smith Foundation, a private grant-making foundation in Springfield, Illinois. Abraham Lincoln Capital Airport, daily flights to Chicago on United and to Dallas on American Airlines. Online at flyspi.com. Eck, Schaefer & Punk, LLP, and ESP Wealth Management, LLC specializing in fulfilling all your accounting and wealth management needs. Securities offered through First Global Capital Corporation, member FINRA and SIPC. Investment advisory services offered through First Global Advisors Incorporated. Prairie Heart Institute, nationally recognized, locally committed. Online at prairieheart.com. And viewers like you, thank you.